This is it, the world's worst and least reliable SUV, according to Scotty Kilmer and basically anybody else who wears a tinfoil hat. Known as the LR3 or Disco 3 overseas, it is about as reliable as Robert Downey Jr. making it to Saturday morning choir practice. Now, I bought this specific car last year for a bargain, $7,000 Canadian, and inevitably I had to sink a pile of money into it immediately. In the last year, I've put around 5,000 kilometers on it as a family beater, and now it's about to be put up to the ultimate test, a 5,000 kilometer family road trip across North America. Now, despite its reputation, the car is more or less running fine, but surprise, surprise, it does need a few things. The front discs and pads are totally toast. Need to replace the rusty fuel tank shield. There's some kind of clunking noise from the rear differential. Okay, let's see if we can replicate the noise. I'm at a standstill. I ended up diagnosing this noise by putting my phone on the ground, starting the car, and seeing tons of play in this rear diff bushing. Change some noisy belts and pulleys, do an oil change, and basically anything else we might find along the way. Now place your bets in the comments. Will I fix it all in time for our road trip? Ah, what a lovely night. To fix a broken turd. And I'm gonna do this the mature way by starting with the hardest job, the clunky diff. So before you do any work underneath the car, you wanna lift up the fuse box and get the third one here, one, two, three. So your Land Rover doesn't try and kill you when you're underneath it. Good. I'm gonna be here a while. Yeah, was it? That's gonna hurt tomorrow. There is so much play in this thing. No wonder it was clunky. I know what I gotta drop. Gotta drop the heat shield. Well, in Rod We Trust, Hunko Junk is finally out. However, my extractor needs extracting. So let's get that out and clean up that hole. All right, well, I was hoping it wouldn't have to come to this, but it looks like the old bushing edge lip is around here and I gotta cut that out allow me to demonstrate. Here's a new bushing, $200 Land Rover part. And as you can see, so now I gotta take the Sawzall and cut this lip and chisel it out. Pray for me. All right, now I'm gonna be an archeologist for the next four hours. So it all looked hopeless from this angle, but I started chipping away from the other side and look at this, huzzah. And we are gonna be ready to press this in. Lube up the hole. Right, so quite literally four hours later, I have pressed that sucker in. And let me tell you, with the ground clearance in here, that is not an easy job. Now the torque spec for this sucker, 200 foot-pounds. Everything is big boy numbers with this car. Whew. I can't even get it to 150. All right, the breaker bar is bending. I'd say that's the job done. I could not for the life of me find anyone else on YouTube who's done this job or documented it. People in the forums have talked about it, but word of advice to prevent this from happening, don't use the rear diff as a jacking point. Use the frame. Now we can finally move on. So 
So now we're gonna tackle the front brakes, which are pretty shot. However, let's check for some play in the steering and the suspension. This is the tie rod. Tons of play, but up and down, there's nothing. So up and down, suspension's fine. Tie rod is our problem. So now that we're doing the brakes, we're gonna take care of these tie rods as well. As you can see, pretty juicy lip over here. Pads, next to nothing left. And then let's pop off this guy here. Sledgy, sledgy. There it goes. This one feels all right. I wonder if it's the inner tie rod. Maybe it's the other side. Open sesame. Little breaker bar action. And there we go. Bingo. Now we're gonna pry this open a bit. And there's the caliper. It is hella heavy, so you wanna tuck it up here and we'll just bungee it into place. Let's take a look at our mangled pads. Take a look, the edges were like failing over here on that brake pad. This was like a millimeter of life left. Caliper pins, we're gonna grease those later. Like everything on this car, monstrous torque is required. Oh. <laughs> Stick a screwdriver in. Ooh, look at that. The rust gods have been kind. Somebody has greased up this hub. Copper grease on the hub. And I went with the real deal, fully coated Brembo discs. No messing around. This is a five and a half thousand pound car. I'm gonna be taking my family in it all the time, going for the best of the best. Next, we're gonna prep the caliper bracket, take off these old pins. Brembo pads comes with the kit. These slide in like that. Check out how nicely Brembo packages their pads. Look at this. They don't swaddle babies as tight as this. Oh yes. Now let's put our caliper back in. These caliper carrier bolts are some ungodly 200 foot pound torque. So I'm gonna go to 150 and then take my breaker bar, go a little bit higher. Oh, that's all my weight. Not heavy enough. <sighs> Good enough. Brake lube on the ears. Now I gotta compress these suckers. So I'm gonna use a two by four. I'll show you in a sec. Time to lube up the brakes. New hardware, 25 foot pounds of torque on these. Good, this brake done. Do the other side. We can move on to those tie rods. All right, here's the old inner tie rod. Here's the end that I took off. I marked with tape where the end is. Now I'm gonna transfer the boot, put the new hardware on here, pop that back in. There's no torque on this, just go nice and tight till it bottoms out and then you know you're good. Ninety-two foot-pounds is this guy. Nice. Come on, Land Rover. Is that all you got? All right, now we're underneath. Get these kick plates off. Change the oil and the front diff fluid. Why the front diff fluid? Well, the last time I changed it, it was super gunky. That was 5,000 kilometers ago. I want to test it out again and see what it looks like now. Here's one of two plates. Ah. 
Smashy, smashy. How do you like me rust? Lade. Got a cardboard here because this is going to come shooting out. Here we go. Oh, yeah. My little shoot spilled oil all over the floor. There you go. Now you can see how it just wants to fly out. Ah. Now, while that's still dripping out, let's change out the front diff. I already opened the fill hole on the other side. The bottom was full of sludge. And uh, it is this time as well. So it's super sludgy, but I don't see any metal shavings. Or maybe that's supposed to be what it looks like. I don't know. Now I'm gonna fill it in from the other side. Once it starts dripping, then you know it's done. I'm using Royal Purple 7590 oil drain plug, 18 foot pounds. Now let's do the oil filter. Take some oil, put it on the gasket, but you already knew that. Always use a rubber strap when you're putting a new one on. Not channel locks, because that'll just mangle it up. Now let's go up top. I'm using Pennzoil Ultra Platinum 5W30. Apparently this stuff is extremely good. I'm gonna try it out. Obviously this is not sponsored, so please don't, uh, don't be hating. Just when you thought we were done in the engine bay, I'm gonna do all the belts and pulleys, because frankly, when you start it up after it hasn't been running in a few days, it gets quite chirpy and noisy and loud. And the last thing you wanna do on a very long road trip is for one of your belts to snap. So let's tackle this. Practically brand new. Changed it about 5,000 kilometers ago, so. Now here comes the tricky part. 36 millimeter wrench. Did I get it? Ooh, I think we got it. Hold, uh, hold the fan by the umbilical cord so it doesn't drop on you. So now I'm not gonna be able to show you much over here, but I'll do my best to explain. So let me give you a better look of what's going on over here. We've got one tensioner here with a square drive, and then down here, there's another square drive tensioner that you can tighten or loosen. And then what we're gonna have to do is take off this pulley as well, because to get the main belt back here, we gotta get this sucker off. And now you take your breaker bar, half inch, and then slip off. Now you wanna stick a piece of cardboard over here on your rad so you're not smashing through it. No, Rock Auto's not sponsoring this, unfortunately. All right, boys and girls. So what I had to do was take off this bracket here that holds this. And now that that's out of the way, you can snake the old belt out of the way. There we go. It's not terrible, actually. All right, let me show you what we're working with. So this is the main tensioner for the main belt. This is the tensioner for the AC, I believe, the really fat one. This one I was able to find a direct replacement for. Lightens, made in Canada, funny enough. My brother used to work for Lightens, actually designing these tensioners themselves. Not for crappy Land Rovers, of course. New tensioner going in. All right, now to spend the next three hours Figuring out how to route this belt. Crank that new tensioner. Success. Now I just gotta put this thing in, clean it up, and put some copper grease on here so it's not gonna get jammed again. Now for the final tensioner. And lastly, the fat belt. It's done. Now the fan with umbilical cord. Now the shroudy. Intake box, clip the sensor back in, and this job is finito. But wait, Scotty Kilmer wasn't wrong. We are not done yet. There is more broken things on the Land Rover. All right, now lucky for you, I've saved one of the best jobs for last. I've got the wheels up on a ramp because we are gonna be tackling this rusty, disintegrated fuel tank cradle. Now, believe it or not, this is the only thing that is holding up your fuel tank on an LR3 or an LR4. And as you can see, it is gargantuan and completely rusted out. I got a new one to the tune of $400, so we're gonna tackle that next.
Right, so here's my plan of attack. I'm using the rusty hole to prop it up with a jack stand. There's a plastic fuel tank underneath. Then I'm gonna be using this two by four and a jack to hold up the rest of the plate. Wish me luck. Should we go lower it? Yeah. Lowering time. Oh, it's coming down. Coming down. It's coming down to the And this thing has come down. Good. You're going to break it. I'm not going to break it, silly. All right, sorry you guys can't see very well, but I've got a ratchet strap here holding up the plastic part of the tank right there. And then I've got another ratchet strap holding on the bottom. And obviously you wanna do this on an empty tank. So mine has like 30 kilometers worth of range left. That's why I can move the tank up and down with my hand. Now we're gonna drop this and hopefully the plastic stays and the rusty bucket drops. And we have touchdown. Now we can wheel out this rusty hunk of junk. Now, take a look at the carnage that is what this thing looks like now. As you can see, I guess this part down here, which is the lowest, gets the most amount of abuse from the road, and that's what rusts out first. Now let's take a look at our new one. So here they are side by side. As you can see, the new one has two screws in the front, two in the back. Now I gotta transfer this guy here and this one here over onto this side. But otherwise this looks identical, which is good because apparently they came with updated fuel tanks, these suckers. Now I'm gonna spray the inside with fluid film rust protector, and then we're gonna spray the underside as well. Time to mandle handle this thing back into position. And rise. Straps released. Time to do the first two. So that is all of them. And as you can see, the two by four is lifted, but this job is now done. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spray the rest of this rusty ass frame with some fluid film. So what I've done is covered the underside with a tarp. Now we're gonna spray with fluid film. I use this stuff personally. I found it on sale for like five bucks a can. Can't beat it. And you definitely want a face respirator. This stuff kind of smells like manure, to be honest. Here's the final ultimate test. Let's see if it clunks. We're at a standstill. Give it hard gas. Woohoo! No clunks. Beauty. You're welcome, YouTube. Now you know how to fix a clunking rear diff. So with equal parts, fear and excitement, loaded up the car at the crack of dawn and we set off. Within a few hours into our drive, the AC started blowing hot air, somehow managed to survive the first day, spent the night in Charlotte, and the next morning I found a shop that topped up the Freon and that fixed the AC, thankfully, before we entered the baking heat of Florida. We had a fantastic time in Florida, and the return trip was pretty uneventful as well, minus the rear passenger control arm that holds the toe in place going a bit loose. Here's a video of me kicking the rear tire and just see how much play there is in that wheel. The car was still driving more or less okay, and that didn't stop us from doing another 500 kilometer road trip to go camping. So yes, inevitably there will be another video and there will be more time and money being put into this thing, but it just goes to show you that even the worst and least reliable is still mighty capable. Thanks for watching.